So now we're going to have a look at how we perform a sign test but with paired data and that's very important that the data is paired okay so it's not just that we have two samples of data the data is paired which means that we have the same information about the same subject before and after something has happened okay so it's not bivariate data where it's two different things about the same subject it's not two samples of data where it's just two uh like a before and after but not the same person or the same thing that you're looking at it is the same information about the same subject before something has happened and after something has happened and this is the same with one that we're going to come on to later on, which is called the Rugg Cox and Rank Sign Test, where again it has to be paired data. So when using paired data, we're comparing the two sets of data gathered about a single subject. We're again looking at the median, but this time we're looking at what's called the median difference, which is shown by the eta symbol with the subscript D. Uh, we again end up using the binomial distribution here and we're looking at a probability of 0 0.5. And again, this is split into one tail and two tail tests. So for a one tail test, uh, again, we're going to use the significance level as the critical value. So to measure the difference, sorry, to measure the effectiveness of a drug for asthmatic relief, 12 subjects, all susceptible to asthma, were each administered a drug after one asthma attack and a placebo after a separate asthma attack. One hour after the attack, an asthmatic index was obtained on each subject, which is as follows. So we've got the information here. Making no assumptions regarding the distribution of the data, investigate the claim that the drug significantly reduced the asthmatic index using the sign test uh, at a 5% significance level. Now, even though here it doesn't mention the words distribution free or non-parametric, it does tell you to make no assumptions about the distribution, which tells us which type of test we are using. So our H naught is gonna be that the median difference is zero. So that means that the numbers before, with the drug and with the placebo are the same. And our H1, is going to be that the median difference is either less than or greater than zero. Now, the reason why I haven't put my symbol in here yet is that we have to think about which way around it is. And we have to show that we have thought about this and we have to do our takeaways in this order. So because usually we're used to doing the top number minus the bottom number, if you think about column subtraction, I'm going to do the drug minus the placebo. And this is how I'm going to get my pluses and minuses. So if we have a think about what value these numbers are going to take on, we want the drug to significantly reduce the asthmatic index. So we're wanting the drug asthmatic index to be smaller than the placebo asthmatic index. So the drug is going to give us a smaller number than the placebo that's going to give us a bigger number. So if we're doing the drug minus the placebo, we're doing a small number minus a bigger number. And if you think about it, if we had, say, 2 take away 5, that gives us something that's less than 0. So that tells me that the symbol in my H1 is going to be that the median difference is less than 0. So that's very important that we think about that. So now we're going to go through and we're going to do the top row, take away the bottom row. But we're only going to write down the sign that that gives us. So if I did 28 minus 32, that would give me a negative number. If I did 31 minus 33, that would also give me a negative number. 17 minus 23 would give me a negative number. 18 minus 26 would give me another negative number. 31 minus 34 would give me a negative number. 12 minus 17 would give me a negative number. 
33 minus 30 would give me a positive number. 20 to 24 minus 24 would give me zero. And the same as we had with the single sample sign test, we're just going to put that as a dot. 18 minus 19 would give me a negative number. 25 minus 23 would give me a positive number. 19 minus 21 would give me a negative number. And 17 minus 24 would give me another negative number. So that gives us the total number of pluses as 2. The total number of minuses is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 2 add 9 is 11, and we have one dot, and we had 12 pieces of data to begin with, so that's right. As I said before, we're going to make this into a binomial, the same as we did with the single sample sign test. So that's 2 plus 9, which gives us 11. The probability is still 0.5 because we're still talking about the median. Again, we're going to choose the smallest of our two totals, which in this case is 2. And we're going to look at the probability of x being less than or equal to 2. Remember, because we're choosing the smaller one, we're always looking at less than or equal to. So now we're going to put that in our calculator into dist binomial bcd. Lower is 0, upper is 2. Remember, if you've got one of the old styles of calculators, that'll just have an x value here, and your x would just be 2. The number of trials that we have is 11, and your probability is 0 0.5, and that gives us 0 0.0327. That is our test statistic. Because this is a one-tail hypothesis test, our critical value is 0 0.05. So then as the test statistic is smaller than the critical value, we're going to reject H0 at a 5% significance level. There is sufficient evidence to suggest the uh, median or average difference or the uh, median reduction in asthmatic index is more with the drug than the placebo. Now we need to be careful here, we need to make sure that we're talking about the two things that we've looked at, which is the drug and the placebo. But also we could argue that there is a big hole in this hypothesis test if like a part B or part C was talking about um, ways that we could improve it well the initial asthma attack that people had may not have been as severe in one case than the other so it might not have been the drug that reduced it it might have been the fact that they had a less severe asthma attack on one of the occasions so that's quite important uh, but that's not to do with our paired uh, sign test so I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try question a go, remembering to be careful to make sure that you write down which way you're going to do your takeaway and think carefully about what kind of sign that means you're going to have in your alternate hypothesis. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and gave the now you try question a go. So here we've got the test scores for 17 pupils who took two tests and we're trying to see uh, test the belief that test one is harder than test two. So again, you can see the thinking there, test one minus test two. Well, if test one is harder, then people are gonna get lower scores on that test. So it's gonna be a small number minus a bigger number, which again, it gives us a negative. So our H naught is that the median difference is zero. Our H one is that the median difference is less than zero. Then you can see that I've done my takeaways in that order, test one minus test two, and I've got those pluses and minuses and the dot. 
If you have done it the other way around, if you decided to do test two minus test one, so your pluses and minuses are the opposite way round, the symbol in your H1 must also be the opposite way round. So just be careful with that. So the number of pluses that we have is four. The number of minuses that we have is 12. Four at 12 gives us 16. So we're using X squiggle B, 16, 0 0.5, which gives us 0 0.0. And then we're looking at the probability that X is less than or equal to four because that's the smallest of the four and the 12, which gives us 0 0.0384. That's our test statistic. Our critical value is 0 0.05 because it's one tailed. So then as the test statistic is smaller than the critical value, we reject H0. At 5% significance level, there is sufficient evidence to suggest that test one uh, that the average score sorry, on test one is lower than test two. And I've even added a sentence here that just says that this suggests that test one is probably harder than test two, just answering that statement that they asked us there. Now, just as a way to help with assigning the pluses and minuses, because it can get quite hard when we have quite a large set of data like this, as you can see here, I have typed the data into my calculator. So the first bit here is for pupil number one. That is their test one score. That is their test two score. And the same with all the pupils going down. Now, if I go to the top of list three, right where it actually says list three, so it's highlighted as you can see here. If I then start to type and if I click shift, and then one, it comes up with the word list. And I want to do list one minus shift and then one again to get the word list again. Two. And then when I click exit, it will do that subtraction and put the answer into list three. Now, this is helpful not only for this hypothesis test, but for the next one as well. In this one, I'm just looking at what symbol that's given me. You could obviously just type all the numbers and all the subtractions into your normal calculator, but this way you can go back and double check that you have entered everything incorrectly quite quickly and easily. So we can see here that we've got a positive, a positive, then negative, negative, zero to give us our dot, and so on, negative, 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 positive, negative, 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 positive. And that's where I've got my pluses and minuses from. So you can use that function in your calculator just to find finding the positives and negatives a little bit easier. And as I said, it will also help us with the next hypothesis test that we are doing. So we're now just going to have a quick look at two tail hypothesis testing with our paired sign test. So here, as we did with the two tail single sample sign test, for the two tail hypothesis testing, we're gonna half the significance level for the critical value. So here, we have non-numerical data, but that's fine because we're going to give higher scores a more positive, we're going to treat them as more positive numbers. So we're trying to, we've got 15 girls are given an oral examination and a written examination in French. Their grades A to F uh, in the two examinations are as recorded here. Using the sign test, investigate the hypothesis that one examination produces significantly different grades than the other. So this time it's not saying that the oral was better than the written or the written was better than the oral. It's just saying that they are different. So our H0 is going to be that the median difference is zero and our H1 is going to be that the median difference is not zero. I'm still going to write which way around I'm doing my subtraction just so that the examiner is aware of what kind of symbols to be expecting. So again, I'm going to do the top one minus the bottom one. So an A is higher than a B, so that's going to give me a positive. A B is higher than a D, so that's going to give me a positive. A C is higher than a D, so that's going to give me a positive. A D is lower than a C, so that's going to give me a positive. An F is lower than an E, so that's going to give me a, a negative. A C is higher than a D, so that's going to give me a positive. A B is higher than a C, so that's going to give me a positive. An E is lower than a D, and an E is lower than a C. So they're then to a negative. A C is higher than a D, so that's a positive. A D is higher than an E. 
and a C is higher than an E, and an E is higher than an F, and a C is higher than a D, and a B is higher than a C. So then we need to add them up. So the total of the pluses is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And the total of the minuses is 4. And that does add up to 15. So then the distribution that we're going to use is x squiggle b 15, because 11 add 4 is 15, not 0.5. And we're looking at the probability that x is less than or equal to 4 because the smallest of our totals there is 4. So if we're going to dist binomial BCD, lower is 0, upper is 4. Remember, if you have an old style of calculator, your x that you just put in there is 4. The number of trials this time is 15. The probability is still 0 0.5. And that gives us 0 0.0592. That is our test statistic. Our critical value is going to be half of our significance level, which gives us 0 0.025. So then as the test statistic is bigger than the critical value, we accept H0 at a 5% significance level. There is insufficient evidence to suggest the, uh, the median score on the oral test differs from the written. So I'd now like you to pause the video and give the now you try question a go. This is back to numerical values so you can use this bit of the calculator again to help you to see which ones are positives and which ones are negative. Remember, if you are going to do this method, that you need to make it so that the list one is highlighted. Don't be in this box here. You need the actual list three bit to be highlighted. And it's shift and one to get the word list into your calculator. Okay, so hopefully you paused the video and gave the no you try question a go. So this time we've got Zara collects data on the length of legs, uh, left hind leg and left foreleg of 10 deers. Zara believes that there is a significant difference between the length of the deer's uh, hind leg and foreleg. Again, it says difference, not increase or decrease. And we're trying to test this at a 10% significance level. So our H0 is that the median difference is 0. Our H1 is that the median difference is not equal to 0. Again, I'm going to be doing hind minus 4. So I have written it down just to make you aware of the pluses and minuses and also the examiner aware of the pluses and minuses. So we've got plus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, 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 plus. So the total number of pluses that we have is 8. The total number of minuses we have is 2. Remember, if you've done your takeaway the other way around, those totals will be the other way around. Then we're using x squiggle b, 10, not 0.5. 8 add 2 is 10. And because 2 is our smaller total, we're going to look at the probability of x being less than or equal to 2, which gives us 0 0.0547. That's our test statistic. Our critical value is going to be 0 0.05 because it's a two-tailed test, so we need to half our significance level. So that means that as the test statistic is bigger than the critical value, we're going to end up accepting H0. At 10% significance level, there is insufficient evidence to suggest that the average length of the hind leg is different from the four legs. So next time, we're going to have a look at another distribution-free non-parametric test, which is going to be the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Thank you very much for listening.